My friends in Jesus and Mary, of the most beautiful messages I've ever heard on the life, on the sanctity, on the virtues of St. Joseph, um, I find these words of the most compelling that come forth from the messages of Our Lady of America. And today, in the beginning of a two-part series, we're going to talk about Our Lady of America's messages regarding the patron of the Universal Church, St. Joseph, her spouse and our spiritual father. Hello and welcome to MaryCast. This is Dr. Mark Mirabali, Professor of Theology and Mariology at the Franciscan University of Steubenville. And again, uh, it's so uh, it's such a, a joy for me to uh, plumb the depths of some of these messages of Our Lady of America. Once again, messages that have been confirmed as already having canonical approval, ecclesiastical approval by Archbishop Raymond Burke, the chief canonist in the church, presently in the Vatican. And today, I want to focus on the messages regarding St. Joseph. They're, they're just profound and beautiful. Talking about St. Joseph's role with us, St. Joseph's uh, state of holiness, why in fact St. Joseph is the greatest saint after Our Lady with a sanctity that excludes, excuse me, that goes beyond even uh, the highest of the angels, the seraphim and the seraphim. But I want you to hear these from Our Lady's words and from the writings of Sister Mildred. So I want to go to the message of March 11th, 1958. And I'm going to take this again from the memoirs of Sister Mildred. On March 11th, 1958, Our Lady said to me, quote, St. Joseph will come on the eve of his feast. Prepare yourself well. There will be a special message. My holy spouse has an important part to play in bringing peace to the world. St. Joseph came as was promised, and these are the words he spoke at this time. Quote, Kneel down, my daughter, for what you will hear and what you will write will bring countless souls to a new way of life. Through you, small one, the Trinity desires to make known to souls its desire to be adored, honored, and loved within the kingdom the interior kingdom of their hearts. I bring to souls the purity of my life and the obedience that crowned it. All fatherhood is blessed in me, whom the eternal Father chose as his representative on earth, the virgin father of his own divine Son. Through me, the heavenly Father has blessed all fatherhood. And through me, he continues and will continue to do so until the end of time. My spiritual fatherhood extends to all God's children. And together with my virgin spouse, I watch over them with great love and solicitude. Fathers must come to me, small one, to learn obedience to authority. To the church always as the mouthpiece of God to the laws of the country in which they live, insofar as these do not go against God and their neighbor. Mine was perfect obedience to the divine will, as it was shown and made known to me by the Jewish law and religion. To be careless in this is most displeasing to God and will be severely punished in the next world. Let fathers also imitate my great purity of life and the deep respect I held for my immaculate spouse. Let them be an example to their children and fellow men, never willfully doing anything that would cause scandal among God's people. Fatherhood is from God, and it must take once again its rightful place among men. As St. Joseph ceased speaking, I saw his most pure heart. It seemed to me to be lying on a cross which was of brown color. It appeared to me that at the top of the heart, in the midst of the flames pouring out, was a pure white lily. Then I heard these words, Behold this pure heart, so pleasing to him who made it. St. Joseph then continued, The cross, my little one, upon which my heart rests, is the cross of the Passion which was ever present before me, causing me intense suffering. I desire souls to come to my heart that they may learn true union with the divine will. It is enough, my child. I will come again tomorrow. Then I will make known to you how God wishes to make me, excuse me, how God wishes me to be honored in union with Jesus and Mary, to obtain peace among men and nations. 
Good night, my little one. So can you imagine the beauty of this message that St. Joseph comes, he's talking about a role of fatherhood that calls all fathers to immolate St. Joseph. Why? Because St. Joseph, in a mind you know, boggling concept, is the heavenly father's representative on earth. Why so? Because it's St. Joseph that's going to be father to Jesus. Well, who's the true father of Jesus? Well, the heavenly father is. But Joseph would become the virgin father of Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? Just like Mary is the virgin mother of God, St. Joseph is the virgin father of Jesus. And so God places all these virtues and holiness in St. Joseph so that he can be the perfect fatherly model for Jesus, but also for all other fathers. That's why every father is to go to St. Joseph and to try to immolate St. Joseph as best we can, to see St. Joseph as humble authority in service. And as we're going to see in these messages, it's very clear that St. Joseph says the father must be the authority, he must be the head of the family, but it's an, it's an authority in service. But today there's a great confusion, there's a gender confusion and there's a confusion in families, but these messages convey in a beauty and a peace and a humility, the father must be the head of the family, just as St. Joseph was the head of the Holy Family. And we see clearly that that's not because there's a, a greater holiness, because of the Holy Family, Joseph came in third, after Jesus and after the Immaculate Conception. But still, it was his task, his role, to be the father, the protector, the authority in service of the Holy Family. Now, uh, you have these other uh, words talking about this vision of his heart. Joseph, uh, you know, uh, shows his heart on a brown cross. It, it's his heart of a passion. Now, what does that mean? It means St. Joseph, for all of his life, knew that Jesus would be dying and that Jesus would be suffering the most excruciating uh, death conceivable and that Mary would be sharing in this. And so can you imagine as a father knowing that your spouse and your child are going to suffer like no other human being and you can't be there. You can't be there to protect. You can't be there to console. You're simply going to be absent. And that was the passion of the cross that the heart of Joseph experienced and offered in anticipation of this great event, which made him, as these messages are going to say, the co-redeemer, second to Our Lady as the co-redemptrix, and of course both of them subordinate to Jesus as the divine redeemer. So it all has to do with purity and redemption, what we experience, how we experience what we experience, and how we offer it for the glory of God and the salvation of souls. We're going to continue in our next segment with the feast day message of St. Joseph. I encourage you to listen to these words. My friends, you're not going to get a more profound treatment, a summary of the height and beauty, the depths and the wisdom of St. Joseph than you find in these messages of Our Lady of America about her beautiful spouse and our spiritual father, St. Joseph. Stay tuned with us. Continue in our next program as we talk about St. Joseph and his call to bring peace to the world as part of the message of Our Lady of America. Thank you and God bless.